Hello and Merry Christmas and Happy New Year and Happy Thanksgiving and Happy CBS and welcome back to Community Bible Study and our study of Peter's first letter to all of us. And because it's the Christmas season, let's open with, well, let's open with a prayer. Father, thank you for this season. Thank you for the reason for this season. Father, in the last number of years, it's, it's almost become a cliche to say Jesus is the reason for the season. And I guess... Sometimes cliches are are true, but but they just scratch the surface, don't they? And Father, we pray that as we enter into a season of celebrating the birth of Jesus, we would remember, and he's the reason. And if he's not all the time the reason, he ought to be the reason all the time that we're in a celebratory mood. So help us, Father, remember that it's all about Jesus. And it's in his name that we pray. Amen. Okay, so since it's the season uh, of Christmas, let's let's open with with joy to the world, right? I, I mean, you, you guys all remember remember the words to joy to the world. Joy to the world, all the boys and girls. Joy to the fishes in the deep blue sea. Joy to you and me. Well, at least that's the way Three Dog Night sang it in, in the 1970s. But I like the way Isaac Watt uh, wrote a poem in the 1700s, it was later turned into a hymn in the 1800s called Joy to the World. Familiar to all of us, right? Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and all of us sing. Do, do we do we sing a familiar carol with with joy thinking about the words of the carol the words of the of the carol joy of the world are very meaningful do we sing do we sing to the king of the cosmos or to the babe in a crash for, for that's what the words say say right Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. A baby in a manger, uh, of course, but but the king has come. Is that what we celebrate? Peter calls us to celebrate the king. Last week, in the in the first part of chapter one of Peter's first letter, he, he said to us that God's mercy provides a new birth and that God's power protects a believer's faith and that Jesus' resurrection proves that the Christian's salvation is true and secure. So this week, we see that that living hope that, that the Holy Spirit talked about through Peter, that living hope should, should lead to the Holy living. It's what, it's what I think our passage is about today. It's, it's to be holy. The second part of the, the first chapter and the first three verses of the second chapter call us to be holy. As Peter reminds us, the reason that we are holy, the reason that we are called saints, the reason that we are to be different is because we were redeemed by the Son and chosen by the Father, and our faith is sealed by the Holy Spirit, and that we are born again to eternal life through the Word of God. It's what he says in our verses today. For you know that it was not with 
perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you by the world, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish, he and you and I were chosen before the creation of the world, but he was revealed in the last times for our sakes. Through him, you believe in God who raised him from the dead and glorified him. And so your faith and hope are in God. For you have been born again, not of perishable, not of things that, that wither and go away, but by, of imperishable, things that are eternal, things that are secure through the living and enduring word of God. Redeemed by the Son, chosen by the Father, sealed and sanctified by the Holy Spirit, born again to eternal life by the Word of God, by the Word of God made flesh, the incarnate Word of God. We, we were slaves to a life without meaning or purpose, but through Christ, we're purchased by the undeserved mercy of God, by, by Jesus paying the ultimate price of his very life. So now we're called. We're called to live a different life, set apart from the ways of the world to, to the way of Christ. For Jesus is the way, and Jesus is the truth, and Jesus is the life that we are to live. So we ask what? We... We're going to look at being holy, and we'll ask, so what? And we'll look at being mature, and then we'll ask, now what? And we'll be called to be different. Be holy, says Peter. Peter says we are strangers, strangers here on earth, aliens. I know some of you look more like aliens than others, but we're all aliens, citizens, and not of, not of, uh, kingdom here on earth, but of the kingdom of God. So our focus should be on Christ, not the world. And Peter says how to maintain our focus on Christ by preparing our minds for action, by, by being sober, by setting our hope on God's grace, and by, and by being transformed by Christ, not conformed to the world. Peter says, therefore, prepare your minds for action. Prepare your minds for action. It is, it is the mind on which the battlefield is fought. The battle for your mind is constant. Battle from enemies such as the flesh and from Satan and from the world. It's a battle for the mind. It's, it's a war. And you've read... You've read, if you did a little bit of study, that, that prepare your minds for actions could be literally translated, uh, gird, up your, gird up the loins of your mind. That's, that's a phrase we use all the time, right? Uh, as a football coach says to his players, gird up the loins of your minds for preparation against the opponent. <laughs> gird up the loins of the mind. It, you read and you studied this and, and you found that gird up the loins means is a military term, to, to, term to, to get ready for action, to get ready for battle. We've got to prepare our minds for the battle that, that is waged constantly. <laughs> Reminds me, when, when I was in the army, I was a paratrooper. And, and as, we, as we flew over the battlefield... And, and we had our parachutes on and we were about to, to jump out on the battlefield. The, the jump master said, stand up, hook up, shuffle to the door. Stand up, get up out of your seats. Hook up, hook up your, your parachute to the, to the line that's going to open them. And, and get out the door and join the battle. Lock and load. Get ready. And, and get ready in your mind because the way we think forms how we act. You've heard the old phrase, garbage in, garbage out. 
So put the word in so that the word comes out and be sober. Peter says, be self-controlled. Control yourself. Don't, don't go into, into action willy-nilly, uh, uh, more enthusiasm than thoughtful action. Be sober, be level-headed, be self-controlled, be calm. Don't be so heavenly-minded that you're no earthly good. And set your hope. Set your hope on God's grace. Set your hope fully, fully on the grace of on the grace to be given you when Christ is revealed, the grace that has already been given to you, the, the grace that will be fulfilled when Christ returned, be, as, as Paul says in the wonderful chapter 12 of Romans, verse 2, do not be conformed any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. To be conformed means, means to have your form shaped by external pressure, to, to have your mind shaped by external pressures of the world, but instead be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be, be transformed to be transformed is, is to express the inner reality of what's, what's in your heart and what's in your mind. Conformity is a result of external pressure. Transforming is a result of the internal transforming power of the Word of God. And, and Peter says... Uh, so be holy in all you do. So be holy in all you do. As, as Paul told us in the letter to the Colossians that you remember so well, right? Colossians 3.23. So, so do everything that you do as though working for the Lord, not for men. That's what he tells us to do. In everything that you do, act as though you're doing it for the Lord, not for men or for the world. Not just some of the time, but, but all of the time in all we do. You know, soldiers that go into battle don't, don't strive to be shot just a little bit. <laughs> they strive to be shot not at all. So, so they, they go into battle with all they do. So we strive to be Christ-like in all we do. So, so Peter had told us the preparation for holy living and now he tells us the practice, some of the practices of holy living. He says, have a sincere love for your brothers. Love one another deeply from the heart. Three ways he expresses the love that we are have to one another deeply. Deep love, not surface love, not sacrificial, not, not uh, a, a love that you wear on your sleeves, but from the heart, not superficial You've heard me say before that God looks at you. God looks at all believers through Jesus-colored glasses. Well, th that's the way we are to look at one another, as though, as though we are looking at them through Jesus-colored glasses. Look at one another. Love one another as Jesus looks at each of us, as Jesus loves each of us. It's an unconditional love. And, and he says not just love each other, but... But strip off, rid yourselves of all malice and deceit and hypocrisy and envy and slander of every kind. I, I, I don't need to go into those. Malice, evil intent toward others, deceit, deliberate dishonesty, hypocrisy, being, being two-faced and two-minded. Envy, w wishing you had what others have and, and wishing they didn't have it. Slander of every kind, murder of reputation. Why? Not just to put others down, but to build yourself up. Wow. 
And, and it's interesting to note that Peter says, rid yourself of those. That implies that they're there. Th those things are not in our nature. They're learned. We, we learn these, these ways. We learn the practice of putting people down in order to, to promote ourselves. Instead, Peter says, be holy. Be holy in your mind and in your actions. So what? So that you can be mature. So that you can grow up. That's what he says. So that you may grow up in your salvation. Grow up in your salvation. An, an interesting term. You're already saved, right? You're justified from the moment that, that you accept Christ as your Savior. But he says, grow up in your salvation. Th that's what Paul says in Philippians. So work out your salvation. Not work for your salvation. Work out your salvation. It, it's going into the gym to to increase the muscles of our salvation. That's what sanctification is all about. The Holy Spirit is our, is our gym coach. He's the one that, that tells us to lift a little bit more, try a little bit harder, get rid of the old poisons in your body and in your mind. Instead, fill your muscles of, of your body and your mind with the Word of God. In other words, be more like the one you claim to follow. Since we learn, as Peter says, that the word of the Lord stands forever, we, we do as Peter and Paul and the Holy Spirit have encouraged us to do. Don't sit back on your haunches. Don't don't just stand on the fact that, that you are justified and, and eventually will be in heaven, but out of gratefulness for what Christ has done for you, be more like Christ. Be perfect? No. No, be holy. Be different. Be set apart from the world, set apart to God striving for maturity. We are being perfected. Hey, look, Moses stuttered. Mark was rejected by Paul. Jacob was a liar. David had an affair. Solomon loved his riches too much. John was self-righteous. Paul was a murderer. Jonah ran from God. Miriam was a gossip. Thomas doubted. Jeremiah was depressed. Elijah was burned out. Martha was a worry wart. Noah got drunk. <laughs> None of these were perfect. None of them were sinless. Maturity does not mean perfectness. It means striving to be better than you were yesterday. And so we be patient with each other as as we all are striving for maturity. We, we encourage one another as each of us is striving for maturity. That's, that's why we're in CBS. It's the perfect gym for sanctification. I've got a button that says P-B-P-G-I-N-F-W-M-Y. P-B-P-G-I-N-F-W-M-Y. M Y, please be patient. God is not finished with me yet. That's the way we treat each other as we love each other deeply from the heart. So now what? So now what? Be different. That that combines being holy and, and being mature. Peter has told us that the word of God reveals God's mind. So we're to learn it. He has told us that the word of God reveals God's heart. So love it. He's told us that the word of God reveals God's will. So live it. By preparing our minds and purifying our hearts and patterning our wills to his. 
preparing our minds by knowing God, preparing our hearts by loving what he loves, patterning our wills by being different, set apart from the world, and set apart to him. Will you be different this season by celebrating Jesus as king on the throne as well as a babe in the manger? Joy to the world ends with he rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love. So hark, the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. Peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners, all of us reconciled. Let us join the triumph of the skies and with the angelic host proclaim glory to the newborn king. Let's pray. Oh, Father, oh, Father, help us live our lives that we might bring glory to the newborn king, that we might tell others of the wonders of his love, that we might show others why we have joy at this season, because the king is on the throne. Glory to the newborn king. We pray in his name. Amen.